Good morning. I hope everything's going well in your life today and that this is just the beginning of a tremendous week for you. I hope it's going to be one of those beautiful spring kinds of weeks that everything just seems to be blooming out and making life more beautiful all the time. I want to I want to focus with you for just a little bit on a statement in Romans chapter 8 and it's it's not in one of the the parts of Romans 8 that we usually think much about but down in the middle of the chapter uh, actually beginning in verse number 18 Paul starts an intriguing discussion I want to really get down to verse 22 and following before talking much about it but just read with me for a moment. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from the bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. Now watch. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, for the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. We, who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Think about this whole discussion about the creation. Paul said, here's what I want you to understand, that this creation is, is being, it's being revealed that uh, we live in expectation of something. This, uh, this creation is waiting for redemption. He said it's, it's that redemption that is tied to the children of God. Now, now think about what in the world is he talking about the redemption of the creation? And, and it seems to me that there's just one thing that will fit that idea. Uh, Peter describes it over in 2 Peter chapter 3 as when, when the Lord comes again and, and the earth and the works that are in it are all dissolved or uh, burned up, some translations have it, done away with, so that we might have a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteousness will dwell. Now, think about this. He says, our creation waits for redemption. When the Lord comes again, it's not just a matter of changing us. It's not just a matter of raising our bodies and, and raising them immoral, immortal and incorruptible and, and that we might have body and soul living in immortality with the Lord. But it also involves the creation itself, that the whole world and everything that is in it is going to be drastically changed and we'll have a new heaven and a new earth wherein righteousness dwells. Listen to what he said again there in verse 22. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. That there is that, that longing somehow deep, not just within us, but in the whole earth that it groans for a new creation. Sometimes we wonder, why in the world are, are things in our world changing in so many ways? Why do we have 
so many earthquakes, so many volcanoes, so many tornadoes, so many hurricanes, so many things that just seem to, to turn the world upside down that often bring death and destruction in its way. And yet every one of those is shouting this truth. This world as we know it is not an eternal world. It's, it's not going to stay. This world and this creation is longing, it's waiting, it's groaning in the pains of childbirth until that time might come when, when not just the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruit of the Spirit, as we groan inwardly and, and wait eagerly for the adoption to sonship, that, that we might have the redemption of our bodies, that we might be changed. So just as this body that is uh, laid beneath the clay and that just decays there, one of these days that body is going to be raised and, and it'll be changed entirely. It'll not be subject to the pains and the problems and, and the failures, even the aging of this life. We'll not go through that again. And instead, we'll have, if, if we have lived for God in this world, we'll have that that whole new creation that the Spirit within us is working to develop in us spiritually as He remolds the soul or the spirit of man into that image that God longs for him to be. But He's planning for that redemption of the body. That body and soul might be joined together. And then, as, as the writer of Revelation describes it, he says that that heaven at that time will come down. We, we saw that heaven coming down from uh, wherever it is, in the third heaven, if you will, uh, that it might be here with us and that we'll then have that new heaven and new earth where righteousness will dwell. It'll be that place that will be the Garden of Eden reestablished, redeveloped for all mankind. Think about the description of heaven in Revelation 21, 22, that the streets are, are paved with pure gold and the gates are of each a single pearl. The gates are not closed at all by day and there's no night there. No need for a temple. God and Christ are the temple of it. No need for a sun because God and Christ are the light of it. But he says there is, is the river of life that flows through the garden. And on either side of the river of life is the tree of life. And, and the tree of life produces 12 different kinds of fruit, one for each month or season. And then the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the people. There, there just won't be any death or pain or suffering or agony there. No more separations. There, there'll be no sea. John at that time was separated by the sea from the people that he longed to be with. He was exiled to the Isle of Patmos, a, a prison island. And, and the sea separated him. He said, when we get to glory, there won't be anything like that again to separate us from God or one another. We'll have that, that great, great reunion that never stops. And, and the joy and the wonder of that place is beyond all of our imagination. Paul said, that's what we're hoping for. That our, our bodies are waiting for that redemption. And, and in this hope, we're saved. But hope that is seen, no hope at all. Who hope for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In the same way, the Spirit is helping us right now in our weaknesses. So that while we don't know what to pray for all the time like we should, the Spirit intercedes with, for God, with God for us with groans that can't be uttered. Listen, our world, our creation, 
our bodies all wait eagerly for that redemption. And what an amazing time that will be. Praise God. There's something massive and vital to look forward to every day.